Hello everyone and welcome back to the 1972 World Chess Championship match between Boris Vasilyevich Spassky and Robert James Fisher. This is game 15 uh, and yes, it is $1,250,000. That is how much money Mr. Chester Fox uh, will not be making uh, due to uh, the match not being filled, uh, filmed. Uh, but uh, Fisher did uh, get a lot of offers on how he could make uh, su such an amount of money. Uh, for example, he was offered uh, a six-figure sum uh, by a film company from California. Uh, it was uh, supposed to be a movie, um, a, a spy murder mystery based on chess, uh, which uh, Fisher declined. Uh, then also he was offered uh, to do a commercial on, um, on a hair lotion product, uh, which uh, he, as he does have very nice hair, uh, maybe maybe not as nice as Spassky, but it is a very nice hair. Uh, but he also declines the, uh, declined this as he said that he never used it, so how could he, uh, you know, uh, advertise it? And uh, there were also some uh, other ideas about how he could make uh, that much money to make up to, to make to make it up to Mr. Chester Fox uh, if he uh, at some point does sue him, uh, even uh, you know doing autographs uh, and then perhaps selling them. And uh, those were mostly ideas by his uh, lawyer. Uh, but uh, for the time being, uh, that has been put aside as we do have game 15 to be played. And uh, Fisher complained about uh, a lot of other things. For example, air conditioning, uh, people in the audience who were more and more seeking for autographs. Uh, and he requested that game 15 will be played in the back room. Uh, but as uh, Lothar Schmidt knew that there was no way in hell that Spassky would uh, agree to this, he... Uh, simply declined Fisher's offer and uh, game 15 was again played, uh, played uh, on the main stage. So once again uh, Spassky is down three points in the match and he does have to start winning games. So there's no time to fool around, he plays e4. Uh, and Fisher, uh, he, he tried a lot of things here, uh, even the Alejens defense, but now he goes back to c5, the Sicilian defense. And it will be very interesting if he will go for the poison pawn variation once again. Uh, knight to f3 by Spassky, d6, d4, c captures, knight captures, knight to f6, knight to c3, and a6. The knight of variation is on the board. Uh, bishop to g5, and now e6. And okay, we have f4. And here, like in the famous game 11, where Fischer uh, played uh, queen to b6 and went for the poison pawn variation, uh, here Fischer declines the poison pawn variation, and he plays bishop to e7, so the standard knight of. Uh, we have queen to f3 by Spassky, queen to c7, and now we have queenside castle, and knight bd7 by Fischer. Uh, it's uh, interesting if you if you try and go for this b5 uh, expansion on the queenside too early, it could be very dangerous because of this e5 breakthrough, uh, attacking the knight and also the rook uh, on a8. Now after bishop to b7, attacking the queen, queen to g3. Again, your knight is attacked, you can do captures, captures, the queen defends the pawn on e5, and after knight to h5, queen to h4, attacking the knight. And also with a double attack against the bishop. Bishop captures with check, queen captures, uh, attacking the knight, and now you can either uh, try g6, with it, which isn't that great, but b4, b4 uh, and now after captures, captures, uh, knight captures on e6 is the move that white has that allows him to win this game, as uh, his attack is coming much faster. Now black's queen is under attack, you do have to do something, the f pawn is pinned, you cannot capture it, uh, and after queen to b6, you get this rook to d8 check move, and now you either have to give up the queen as black, or you can move the king, uh, and now you are in the mating net. Queen g5 check, captures, bishop c4 check, bishop d5, and bishop captures on d5, this will be checkmate. So as you can see, already on move uh, 9, uh, a very sharp variation can arise from the knight orf. So if you want to play the knight orf, you really have to know the lines very well. Uh, knight bd7 by Fisher, and now comes the bishop to d3. This bishop to d3 move was the uh, latest theory development in how white can pursue uh, his advantage uh, against the knight orf. Uh, now b5, this is now playable, uh, we have rook h to e1, and now bishop to b7 by Fischer. Uh, if you try something like b4, then knight to d5 will still be an idea. For example, e captures, e captures, you will open up the e file, uh, where black will not be able to castle, as the king now has to guard the bishop, and white will have a very, very promising game here. This knight is coming to c6 at some point, and it will be very, very, very hard to play for black. So after rook he1, bishop to b7 by Fischer, and now comes queen to g3. 
Uh, Spassky simply keeps improving his position a little by little. Uh, although uh, there was a game, uh, there was a move knight d5 here. It was uh, even played in the game Velimirovic versus Ljubojevic, where knight captures was played. Uh, e captures on d5, and after bishop captures uh, here, Velimirovic, as Velimirovic is the person to do this, would uh, did play uh, rook captures on e6 with check. Pawn captures and now comes knight captures uh, on e6 and uh, even though it seems black is falling apart black can actually defend this he simply moves the queen queen to b6 uh, and after queen to h5 check now comes g6 queen captures uh, uh, sorry first bishop captures on g6 with check now comes king e7 queen captures on g5 and now after knight to f6 uh, black seems to have defended and now all he has to do is bring his rooks into the game and white doesn't seem to have a way to keep attacking here so although it seems to be a very dangerous position for black uh, black can in fact defend so queen to g3 by spassky uh, we have queenside castles by fisher as now knight to d5 will no longer be an option here. Uh, and then now comes b uh, bishop captures on f6 and knight captures on f6. Bishop captures on f6 would be too dangerous. Uh, here, Spassky could simply play bishop captures on b5. And now if pawn captures, then you get knight captures here, attacking the queen. And after the queen moves, knight captures on d6 with check. King moves and now even uh, e5 is coming, you attack the bishop, bishop e7. And now even knight captures on f7 with a double attack against the two rooks. And here black is really falling apart. Uh, so after bishop captures on f6, we have knight captures on f6 by Fisher, And now uh, queen captures on g7. Uh, Spassky snatches a pawn here and it seems to be... Uh, it seems that it works. Uh, we have rook, f, rook to f8. You do have to protect the f7 pawn. You can't allow queen captures here and then queen captures here. Uh, and now simply queen back to g3. So Spassky decided that he in fact does have the time to play queen captures on g7 and then go back to g3. Uh, but of course this allows Fisher to play b4 uh, attacking the knight. And now comes knight to a4 by Spassky. Uh, rook h to g8 attacking Spassky's queen. And now queen to f2. Uh, we have knight to d7, uh, Fisher is uh, remaneuvering his pieces to place them on the ideal squares uh, when, when you're playing the knight of uh, queen, uh, king to b1, uh, a very nice uh, prophylactic move, and now comes king to b8, uh, 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 also a very nice prophylactic move by Fisher, uh, as going immediately for knight to c5, knight captures, pawn captures, and now knight can simply go back c4 bishop is coming to e2 and now again uh, with ideas of queen coming to a7 you would have to uh, waste a move with uh, king to b8 so uh before going into all of this fisher simply improves the position king to b8 and now comes c3 uh, spask would uh, like to open the b files uh, the c file so he can place his rooks on the c file uh, and now comes knight to c5 attacking the undefended knight on a4 uh, bishop to c2 defending the knight and now comes pawn captures on c3. This is the correct idea by Fisher because if you capture the knight then you get bishop captures on a4 uh, and after pawn captures here now you get a rook to c1. Queen to a5 attacking Spassky's bishop but now comes the bishop to c6 a very dangerous move. Now bishop cannot capture uh, because bishop captures would uh, fork the king and the queen. And after c captures here, now you get queen captures on b2. And now black is lost. You're threatening checkmate here. Uh, and after queen moves to defend it, now you get bishop to a4. And now, uh, as funny as it <laughs> sounds, uh, the queen is trapped. The queen has nowhere to go. The bishop is slicing uh, through this diagonal here. Uh, the only squares available to the queen are a5 and d8 here. And it doesn't matter if you go uh, d8 or a5. Knight to c6 will win the queen as the bishop on b7 is... Uh, uh, is pinned. Uh, so this is check, the queen is forked, you're gonna lose the queen here. Same same applies if you go here, again, it's check and you lose the queen. Uh, so here after bishop to c2, not knight captures, but rather in, uh, immediately uh, b captures on c3. Knight captures on c3 and now bishop to f6. And Gligoric mentions that uh, here we have a, a position where black's uh, pieces are on ideal squares for the knight or Something seems to be wrong with the interface here, uh, and uh, uh, but he is a pawn down, so it's hard to evaluate the position. Is this g pawn 
uh, worth having for black or is the open, semi-open G file perhaps good for black? Uh, a very hard thing to, uh, to decipher. Uh, but okay, g3, not allowing this rook to be a dangerous piece on g8, we have h5, and now comes e5. Spassky needs to do something, and he goes for a central breakthrough. d captures on e5, f captures on e5, and now bishop to h8. You cannot capture on e5. If you capture on e5, then you get this very dangerous knight d to b5 with an attack on the queen. Uh, pawn captures, knight captures, and now after queen to b6, uh, you get rook captures on e5. Queen captures, and now rook captures on c5, and uh, white is winning here regardless of what black plays. Uh, you have to move the queen somewhere, let's say you move the queen here, but now you get queen f4 check, king moves, and now rook to a5 check, and here uh, you're simply getting checkmated. Even rook to a7 is an idea uh, to, to allow you to bring your pieces in, and black will get checkmated here. So uh, here, uh, Fischer goes bishop, bishop to h8, and now comes knight back to f3. Uh, rook to d8, and here rook captures on d8. Rook captures on d8, and knight to g5. Spassky has to again play something, and uh, he, he goes for the f7 pawn. Uh, bishop captures on e5, and we have queen captures on f7, offering a queen trade, but now comes uh, rook to d7 by Fischer. And here was a moment where Spassky most likely had to play queen e8 and uh, be satisfied with a draw after rook d8, queen f7, rook d7, queen e8, rook d8. Uh, but uh, Spassky uh, can't really use draws to get back into this match, so he played queen captures on h5. He wants to win this game. Uh, and Fisher now uh, takes his opportunity and uh, uh, ruins white's pawn structure on the queen side. Queen ca uh, bishop captures on c3, uh, b captures on c3, and now queen to b6 with check. King to c1, and now comes queen to a5, attacking the a2 pawn, uh, the c3 pawn, and also preparing to bring his pieces into the game. Uh, one, one idea being knight to d3 check. Uh, we have queen to h8 check by Spassky. Uh, if you try something like knight captures on e6, uh, to with a double attack against Fisher's knight, then Fisher would just laugh at you with knight to d3 check, and you lose the queen as it's undefended on h5. So after queen to a5, we have king to a queen to h8 check, uh, king to a7, and now a4 by Spassky. And here it seems that Spassky is offering offering a pawn, uh, but as this is game 15 in the match, and uh, since both of them uh, are very tired. Uh, Gligoric mentions in his book that uh, knight to d3, the move Fischer played, is uh, the best way to go as it's very direct, you want to remove one of the defenders uh, of uh, white's king, uh, and that a move like knight captures on a4, that's very hard to calculate, there's no mate uh, in sight and uh, it would be simply too dangerous. But it's very interesting, uh, the engine gives knight captures on a4 as uh, straight winning like uh, like there's no question about it uh, giving the line bishop captures queen captures and now after white tries to bring his queen into the game uh, queen a3 check king moves and now bishop to d5 uh, with the idea of playing bishop to a2 check uh, and now after queen to d4 check king has to move and now comes uh, well maybe not to b7 but to b8 uh, and now rook to e8 uh, rook to e2 uh, preparing to defend this square and also preparing a rook to b2 to come with check. King to c8 and now rook to d2, uh, but now uh, you would have bishop to a2 check. Rook captures and now uh, rook to b7 check. Uh, king moves and now queen captures on a2. Uh, king, either you will uh, move the king for example here and then you will uh, lose the queen this way uh, or you will, uh, after queen captures here, you will move the king here, and then you will get checkmated. Uh, but regardless, uh, a4 uh, doesn't work. A knight captures is a winning move for Fisher here. But Fisher goes for the human move. Knight to d3 check. Uh, we have bishop captures, uh, rook captures, and now king to c2. Uh, defending the a2 pawn, the a4 pawn, uh, because now if queen captures, king captures rook. So you do have to do something about this, and uh, still, this is still a winning position for Fisher. Uh, but uh, Fisher feels that everything is winning here, and it's in fact very hard to find a defensive idea here for black. So Fisher played rook to d5 here. Now defending the rook, queen captures on a4 is coming, uh, but a much better move would have been rook to d7. With this move, Fisher is uh, completely winning. Uh, however, this rook to d5 move, not so much, so feel free to pause the video here and try to find the move that uh, saves the position for Spassky. 
Uh, I'll give you a couple of seconds. It's not an easy decision to make as your knight on g5 is definitely hanging. So feel free to pause the video and uh, try to defend this with white. Uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations. You are an amazing defender of uh, terrible positions. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, uh, rook to e4, a very nice move by Spassky. Uh He offers the knight on g5 while protecting the pawn on a4. And if this rook went to d7, like we mentioned, that instead of on d5, then this move wouldn't be possible. And uh, But Fischer didn't think it was possible because the knight on g5 was under attack. Uh, and here's the problem. If rook captures, then you have queen to d4 check. Queen to b6, and now rook captures on e6. Queen captures, pawn captures, and here Spassky would have uh, three pawns uh, uh, for... for uh, for a piece and it does seem that uh, white will be able to draw this game uh, so after rook to a4 rook to e4 rook to d8 was played by fisher uh, attacking uh, spassky's queen on a8 and also opening up a discovered attack here against the rook uh, queen to g7 only move pins the bishop on b7 so the rook cannot be captured now comes queen to f5 pinning the rook but spassky simply unpins king to b3 uh, we have queen to d5 check king a3 and now queen to d2 uh, Fisher is now preparing rook to d7 uh, to unpin, attack the queen, and then bishop captures rook is uh, a possibility. Uh, rook to b4. Spassky simply moves the rook and now pressures uh, Fisher's bishop on b7 and also threatens checkmate. Uh, we have queen to c1 check and it was in this position that the game was adjourned, so the game will be continued uh, tomorrow. Uh, but it was uh, not a very long continuation of the game. Uh, after, uh, tomorrow at this position, the game resumed and a couple of more moves were played. Rook b2, queen a1 check, rook blocks, queen c1 check, rook b2, queen a1 check, and the game ended. So uh, only three more moves were played after uh, the continuation of this adjourned game, but still the, the audience gave them really, really a huge applause uh, as it was, uh, again, a very... A very nice fighting game, and even though this game and the previous game were draws, you can see how much, uh, how much fight there is in in these uh, drawn games in this World Chess Championship match. So yeah, uh, the result is now nine to six. So Fisher Fisher keeps his uh, three point lead, and it will be very interesting how this uh, whole thing will end. Uh, uh, I'll be back to the match with game sixteen very soon. I uh, really hope you are enjoying the coverage of this series so far. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Paul Muller, Chris Amico, Munsir Sirag, Software Properties, and Chris Picard for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and uh, I'll see you soon, uh, like I said, with hopefully with some more interesting content. Thank you all, and I'll see you soon.